Hi, welcome to another episode of Hot Takes. If you want an economy to thrive, you must give people the room for them to use their animal spirits. Now, this was a line from a very famous economist. And I can't remember, was it John Maynard Keynes or Milton Freeman? Could have been Milton Keynes. I think, I think it was John Maynard Keynes. Uh, and he, he basically said, to make an economy thrive, you've got to give people their head. You've got to let them run wild. Go and do. Be entrepreneurs. Take the risks. Reap the rewards. Create the economy. Create jobs. Spend money. And everything circles around that. This is the way an economy grows. If you want to throttle an economy, you throttle their animal spirits. You tax them hard. You create a lot of bureaucracy around doing anything. You restrict freedoms. Now, Keir Starmer said he wanted to grow the economy. He wanted the economy to grow so that everyone could reap the rewards and the taxes would rise in a booming economy and then it could do a lot more good things. But for an economy to grow, like I say, you've got to loosen the fiscal and monetary bonds let people go, give them the tools to do the job, and then sit back and don't interfere. What Keir Starmer is doing is the complete opposite of this. He is raising taxes. That's a stifler. That depresses economies. That makes people less inclined to take risks. It means people will hold on to their cash and not spend it because they can't see the way the rewards will be reaped by the investments. He talks about growth and he acts about shrinkage. He wants more uh, control. He wants more restrictions. He wants to tie people in to new rules and regulations rather than loosening the rules, loosening the regulations that's needed to grow an economy. Now, monetary control, or at least monetary policy, is no longer... Um, a remit of the government, because Gordon Brown handed that over to the Bank of England. I think perhaps in times of emergency, the government should be able to pull back monetary policy and say, no, we need the economy to grow. We need to push this. Let's loosen this. Let's loosen that and do something and have that political control over monetary policy. And certainly the uh, the monetary supply side needs to be very, very tightly controlled, not left to an unelected bunch sitting in a small back room in the Bank of England. It needs to be something that's out in the open and discussed so people know what's going on. Um, and as for boosting the economy and boosting confidence about the economy, Starmer is doing, and going out, I think going out of his way, uh, making deliberately obtuse choices to simply undermine economy and, and confidence and the willingness of entrepreneurs to take risks. And this is all the more puzzling when you consider how much of a hole they claim they're in. Now, we've talked about the Laffer curve many times. You raise taxes, you know, so you raise the taxes, you get less tax take. People don't spend and there's less uh, tax points at which you can claim. Um, now, growth is forecasted to grow 1.25% this year. The economy's grow, and that's, that's, a, that's a good growth. That was at the beginning. That was on May. On, sorry, on, on July the 4th, the week before. That was the last time they admitted it. They're saying now it's going to grow by 0.25. That's a remarkable drop in growth. It's still going to grow, but tiny, tiny. Instead of being a good growth, it's going to be a tiny growth. Why is this happening? Well, the deficit still grows. There's the threat of interest rate hikes, and not just interest rate hikes, all the other all the other taxes going up will and, and all the the money flooding in, for example, into 22 percent for the doctors, 14 percent for the train drivers. And that that's inflationary. It means people saving money will watch their money dwindle and evaporate. So what do they do? They take their money out of savings. That means taking money out of banks. Well, the banks haven't got that much cash. But when people take money out of the banks to put it into things that will grow, such as investment in stocks and shares, in gold, in property then the banks don't actually have the monetary supply to lend. 
that damages entrepreneurial ship. So if the banks don't have the money, they have to get the money. They go to the Bank of England and say, look, all the people are taking their money out. We need more money. The Bank of England will go, yes, have some money. You've increased the money supply. That further weakens the value of the money. It's a dance. Everything Starmer is doing is destructive and there is no growth possible. It's all gloom. Now, he's obviously tempted from his lefty wing policies to destroy the economy because it makes it easier to control people. You know, Starmer's boot on the face of the people of Britain forever kind of thing. Very big brother. Keep them poor, we can control them. We don't want entrepreneurs. We don't want rich people. We don't want people succeeding. We don't want anyone achieving. We don't want people looking up to the stars. We want them staring down at the gutter. And that is why his policies are out to do this. It's deliberate. But it's going to come back and bite him. Because the rest of Europe, for example, are looking at growth now. The rest of Europe are moving considerably to the right. They're not looking at the old leftist ways. People are rejecting it. Only 20% of people in this country voted Labour. That should be the message. If we actually had proportional representation, Labour would not be the government of this country. Time for change? Definitely. Time for change at the top of the Labour Party? For sure. Time for the Labour Party to change direction before it's too late? Absolutely. But we can't do it. Because the 20% that voted Labour fucked us royally for five years, possibly forever. Never has such a small amount of people destroyed a country so completely. And for all Starmer there standing going, I want growth. Well, if you want growth, Starmer, resign. Resign and go. Call a general election and give the people of this country a chance to choose a new government that isn't going to destroy the country as it is, destroy the future, destroy the future for your children, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren, and give people hope. Let them look up to the stars. Take away the option of looking down at the gutter, or at least if they do look down at the gutter, see all the little turds that are the Labour Party MPs as they get flushed down the storm drain never to be seen again, because that's all they are. And they're complicit. Every Labour MP is complicit with what's going on, even ones who disagree, because they're not standing up, they're not rebelling, and they're not saying no. For evil to flourish, a good man need do nothing. And these people are doing nothing. So they're complicit. Let me know what you think. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.